although I do realize that because this is not uh, a strictly an online class or th because this is strictly an online class, might not have that many people join us. And when I was teaching a class for uh, CU, I'm teaching two classes for CU this semester. Last semester, I didn't really reach out um, too much. I'm here, I'm available, but I thought, why not add this dimension since I'm doing it for all of my other classes anyway? Because the reality is we might even need it a little bit more, right? For like an online class, just to make sure that you don't feel so just sort of out there in the world. And by out there in the world, I mean confined to your home or your basement or <laughs> or whatever, whatever situation you're facing right now. Okay. Uh, so we've got uh, some folks here. This is fantastic. Cool. I'm glad I'm doing this. All right. My name is Jason, and you'll have to forgive me. My goal for this semester was every class showered with a fancy teacher shirt on, looking ready. Um, but this morning, I also own a four acre farm. Uh, and this morning is the first, this is like, I'm gonna do it for you. Oh, it's like home alone for me. This is the first day in like 10 or 11 months that both of my teenage boys and my partner are not in the house. I don't know. I don't know. I might, uh, might go to bed, bath and beyond. Who knows? Who knows? No, I'm definitely not going to find myself there, but I, I, I don't even know. I honestly, at this point, I'm just, I'm just going to celebrate even though I'm 47, like I'm Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone. And I'm sporting my Chicago hat if you didn't know that Home Alone was set in Chicago. Uh, so let me give you a quick rundown uh, of myself. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is sociology. If this was calculus, I probably wouldn't tell you a whole lot about myself because it's calculus. But we are talking about human beings. We're talking about human interaction. And to do that this semester, the more I know you, the more I'm humanized, uh, I think the better experience this class will be in general. Um, and there's an advantage here, which is, I guess, oh, so the class, the section that I'm teaching is the section that uh, was taught by the current uh, head of the department. So this individual, I think, is now the head of the CU Social Department. And I love sociology. I've been teaching sociology for 15 years. Um, I teach at Front Range. I mostly teach at CSU. I live just outside Fort Collins in Laporte, like I said, on a four acre farm. Um, so I love Soch. So I guess because I recorded like all the videos ahead of time this last summer, just because I wanted to be prepared. And I mean, I was like doing two or three videos a day, going in the other room, changing my shirt. That's right. So that it looks like another day in class. Uh, but those videos, those lectures are actually there for you all semester of them in modules. And my 13 year old son, Zion, is an amazing artist, uh, animator, film guy. So he has spliced in some elevator music at the beginning, some intros, some outros, maybe a few Star Wars references in there, which I'm gonna tell you, I mean, I, I really only have to reach about six inches in any direction to find no less than a hundred Star Wars toys. If you, if you think I'm joking, I'm not, I'm not, I, uh, I'm a huge, huge Star Wars fan. Uh, and my mom never made me get rid of any of my toys. So I still have them passed them on to my two sons. I have two sons, Storm, he's 15, uh, plays stand-up bass and orchestra. He's taking Calc 3, is a sophomore in high school. I, why would anybody ever do that? I mean, I love math and support you. Um, and my other son's name is Zion. Uh, he's got big, long blonde dreads because he's a Viking and brushing his hair. There's just no purpose to it. So he went full dreads a couple years ago. And I know what you're thinking. This guy has a farm. Yes, we grow organic food. My son's names are Storm and Zion. But I assure you, I'm not a hippie. I take baths. We're all good here. We're all good here. And as much as I love Soch and uh, want to have fun with it, my main goal this semester is retention. I think this information is critically important to your experience in life. And because of that, I, and I want it to be awesome, I think it applies to just about everything. Um, retention is really, really, really important to me. Uh, so yeah, we have a lot of fun, um, but we're also, the social is a lot of work too. So I think though it pays to, you know, know what human being is teaching you and who you're interacting with. Um, I've been teaching for about 15 years, which has just went like this actually turned down a job teaching at Front Range Community College 15 years ago when they said, would you teach sociology? And I said, no. And it took me that long to say no. I was doing another job at the college at the time. And they said, why not? And I said, well, both my parents were teachers and really they didn't have any money. And you know, let's just know. And um, she's like, nobody's ever turned us down that fast. And uh, so a week later I said, yes. 
15 years later, I've been teaching social. Actually, like two weeks later, I was fired from the other job I was doing at Front Range. And I still work for them 15 years later, huh? If you can accomplish that, that's called don't burn your bridges, folks, because you never know. Um, so I love social. And I went into teaching social. And now that's what I do. It's my jam. I also own a four acre farm. Uh, it's called Ravensdale. We grow a ton of food. We have over 100 chickens. We have a big garden where we grow as much organic food as we can, not for anybody else. I mean, I did pick the three lowest paying professions, musician, teacher, and farmer. So don't want that responsibility, but we do see how much food we can grow for our own family every year. Um, in addition to selling organic plant starters and eggs from our farm stand and stuff like that, I also play music. I've been playing in the same band in Colorado for 15 years, uh, but I've also been playing since I was 15. And my dad used to chaperone us in places. So uh, last summer was the first time our band wasn't playing. I think we lost out on 50 or $60,000 worth of gigs. We opened up for all sorts of national acts. There was a lot of those gigs that were supposed to be up in Aspen and Summit County and stuff. Um, so we started having socially distanced safe shows on our farm uh, and turned it into a bit of a mini music venue. Um, but safely, obviously, uh, I know everybody here supports masks because you're all paying over $100,000 to get an education based on science. That's right. Whether it's a social science or, or another science, I know that we're all on board. So that was cool for us to open up our farm, do something safe. And my partner, Julie, is an artist and she works at a, um, a vitamin cottage, so a natural food store, an organic food store which has put her from like stocking groceries, listening to reggae music, really mellow to on the front lines of people wanting to go in without masks and engage the workers. And it's turned into a really stressful deal over the last year. So she's taken more time for the farm and her artwork as well. Um, but yeah, we are motivated by our, by our diets and, and the food we eat and our connectivity to it. So um, now this semester, I do possess all the degrees necessary to do this. Uh, but I don't want that to get in the way for us, right? I don't want this to be teacherville and that's like studentopolis and there's like this academic barrier between us. You're not paying for that. Personal, oh, ding. Personally, I think that you should be paying for a lot of access to teachers who are really excited about what they're doing. So my promise to you is that I'll be as accessible as possible for you this semester. And you know, nobody's gonna get lost. And the most important thing you can do all semester long is to stay in touch. I guarantee you, before I get into the mechanisms of this class, life is going to happen because that's what happens. Someone is going to be shredding some gnarly pow pow, bro. I know, I know. My job as the parent of two teenagers is to purposefully misuse as many terms as I can. So, uh, or you're going to break up with somebody or somebody's going to break up with you and it's the end of the world. And four weeks later, you're like, Hoo -hoo, I, oh boy, I'm glad that's over with. I didn't see that one coming. That being said, life happens. So the best thing you can do is to stay in contact with me. I am not going to give you some judgy look over my glasses. Like, why haven't you valued this class? You're paying for it. You're doing it on your own. I'm here as an awesome resource for you to help guide you through this, to answer any questions you may have. And I think that that's, that's my goal, right? All right, and that, that's success for you. So tests, my job's not to trick you, it's to reinforce correct information enough times to where you retain it, right? Like how this class works, not my job to see you struggle, my job is to help you out, all right? I wanna be there for you. So um, without busting into a chorus of, I'll be there. Is that, is that the, the Jackson 5? How did I run into that this morning in the back of my head? Well, anyway. I'll give you a break from that one. Okay, uh, let me do a screen share here. And basically, I'm gonna real briefly walk you through the course. Um, and, and I know that you are all smart enough to have looked around already and seen that, but I figured I'll let you ask some questions after I do a little bit uh, of a brief explanation. So let me real quick get over to this window and I'm gonna start to... Uh, screen share here and zoop. all right can you see this just a nod of your head that's working great fantastic um i guess I'm, I'm asking that because and sort of on the front end as an advice to you i'm like does this is this even working don't trust the intranet if you've got something to submit at 11 59 don't wait till 11 59 unless you trust the internet right i don't um, that being said, if it's at 1202, 
I'm not going to take any points off because what a jerk that would make me. Hey, yo, that's right. All right. Um, so let's look at this announcements. Everything you need for this class, starter stuff for sure, and questions and updates, I post on announcements. So I'm, I'm happy you're here. Uh, the syllabus, and I'm going to say this right out of the gate about the syllabus. The syllabus has a lot of information you need, all sorts of disclaimers, information to links for on campus, but the, the pace, the exact dates, the, the weekly schedule there is completely like, this is an estimate. But online, under assignments, there's no estimate, okay? Here are your due dates. January 29th, February 12th, February 9th. You see what I'm saying? So even though the syllabus has some approximations, Canvas is where everything is. Why I would rewrite it out on a syllabus like it, when there's links and we go through all this trouble, but whatever, right? Stick to this. This is the plan, okay? Um, there are two exams in this course. They are essay exams. I know, I know, I know, but check this out. You also see here content exam or content assignments. So every week, approximately, um, you'll have a content assignment. It's four or five essay questions. If you click on this here, it shows you a bit of a rubric. It tells you what I would like. I'm fine with you citing an APA or MLA, but you must have in-text citations. And you're writing a paragraph a little more for each of these questions, okay? Now, the benefit is if you keep up weekly, even though, wow, Jason, I'm writing an essay and that's only 10 points, that doesn't seem like a lot. It's not, but I'm gonna correct those. I'm gonna work with you on your writing. And then when it comes time for the essay exam, those questions are gonna be very similar, but they're gonna be 25 points each. So you can copy and paste what you've done weekly and then you can add to it your personal insight, an extra source, whatever that might be, okay? So to me, if you keep up during the week, like weekly, then the tests, the exams, again, are just a reinforcement of the correct work, right? So that's, again, for retention purposes, and that, that should be pretty easy. If you have any questions about that, let me know. This Friday is the first content assignment. You're going to have to jump right in to the first lecture and jump right into the first chapter. The book is required. You can't answer these questions, pulling them from sources all over the internet. Now, I like Sage. I actually know my Sage rep. I know the company. We offer a, a used book, an online book, a loose leaf with an online thing. I think that you can find this textbook out there, perhaps even at the library, potentially. Regardless, I do that because I don't think you need, you're already spending enough money, right? School already costs a lot. Um, let's hope with any luck this administration decides to cancel student loan debt because then instead of working sort of chattel slavery for years trying to pay off the 100000 plus that you own at jobs that you have no interest in, you can get into doing what you need to do that's going to help society out that you're interested in, right? Okay, um, let's look at discussions. Now, uh, I'm going to click on discussions. That didn't work. Let's go over here. Click on discussions. Um, here's where they're all laid out, Okay. I will say this, the social observation is due February 2nd. I might've extended it past next week or to next Tuesday or whatever, but it's, it's a quick thing. I want you to think in sociological terms. So I want you to go someplace and observe people. Yes, Jason, I, yes, I know it's COVID. Look out your window. If you're outside your dorm or your house, you could even go online to any number of live streams and probably watch people farming or watch people roller skating. I don't know but I want us to start to think like sociologists this semester. So that's, that's one that's there. Um, and, and I wanna click on number one. This is not the observation, this is the first one. So there's, oops, sorry, there's your social observation. Let me go to um, uh, chicken people. Oh, this is gonna be great. Now, sometimes I am gonna ask you, this is an Amazon link. If you don't have Prime or Amazon, you might have to rent it. Normally in class, I would show you all the movies I own, but this, this is good stuff and stuff that's likely not out there for free. Um, so if you have a real, real problem with that, let me know trying to find access to this. This is an awesome, awesome first discussion. Now, I want you to watch it, okay? And then I want you just to discuss the film. You haven't like, you will have read chapter one, you can use some terms for chapter one, but here's the deal with every single discussion. And let me go back here. And I have here, I believe, um, all right, I want to add, I guess I'll add this. 
Um, I wanted to make sure it was here. It doesn't seem to be, but, but that's okay. I'll make sure that I put it in here today. And it's what I expect from discussions. So when you see something like chicken people do February 11th, first post by February 4th, what does that mean? Well, it means that to get full points for every single discussion, you have to post at least one post a week in advance of the due date. Does that make sense to everybody? Because if you don't, then everybody posts on the last day. It's not like sort of, it is absolutely every time. And it's, it's like, that's like regurgitating on the internet, not like learning and having an actual reciprocal discussion. And then we're gonna take this discussion because I love, I think the films that I'm gonna show you are so cool that then we're gonna discuss them once in a while, maybe in a Zoom meeting or something like that. Anyway, um, so you have to have at least one post a week ahead of time, and then at least two more posts before the end all on different days. That keeps you from posting multiple times on the last day. And of course, for many discussions, people will post a lot more than that, okay? Again, a lot of that is your opinion, your sociological reactions to these films and things. They're not hard. You just gotta make sure you have them done by the deadlines, okay? If you ever get hung up with anything, I will post in here what I expect from my discussions. That's one thing that apparently I did not get on the discussion board yet, but that's good. I keep looking through this thing I don't know, just dozens and dozens of times. And if I catch something, then I will change it. That, that brings me to, you know, whatever. Number two main point, I'm not perfect. Neither are you. If you see something, if you have a question about something, if I've misstated something, just follow up with me and I'll make sure to clarify you uh, for you in no stress, okay? All right. Oh, I do want to go back to discussions. Okay, so here's the deal. Every year for 15 years, I have decided that my classes can use the chance at extra credit to feed people. I think it's really, really, really important to feed people in our communities to do, look, if you're going to, what, you think each classroom at CU is like a million dollar classroom? Oh, I bet. And at CSU, the day I get in there, I'm cranking the speakers, I'm checking out the lighting. I'll even go in there on break to watch like the Mandalorian or Star Wars movies with my kids. Anyway, you, you learn in some fantastic expensive classrooms and still, we can't do all the sociology that people have to do inside four walls, inside all the time on a book in front of a computer, okay? So, and usually people start to look at this once they've got their first exam score and either they did really well or they didn't or they need some extra points, but it's going to be worth at least 25 extra credit points. And this semester, last semester, I had them donate to Larimer County because those are the people I've been working with forever. This is a food pantry in Boulder County. Okay, so someplace closer to home, check it out. All right, boom, Downing Sociology Food Drive, see you, we're all set up to go. If you donate at least $5 and then write a discussion board post with two citations about your donation, what it means. Um, we're gonna talk a lot about inequality this semester. We're gonna talk a lot about this type of thing. And so, I want it to be possible for us to help people around us. Now, if you donate at least $5 here and you write the discussion board post, you can earn those points. If you don't have $5, this isn't a pay to place thing, okay? You can write a two page paper on homelessness and poverty in Northern Colorado. But I'm finding after 15 years of teaching, my students not only want to do something more for people, but they're sick of writing papers. And I'm sick of assigning another paper for you to write when you could be helping somebody that doesn't eat, that is food insecure, that literally has no idea where their next meal is coming from. So I chose these people because they're in Boulder and I really, really like what they're doing, okay? So that I think you have to have done. Um, and I, it says May 4th here, but I think that the actual date is April 28th. Yep, because we are a week shorter um, in as far as like how we're looking with everything. So that is open the food drive is open all semester long and hey 25 points that matters especially at the end you know so um that's it's it's whether you have the resources or not i have that hair uh, there let me know um jason do you get anybody to do this all right i'm gonna stop the share so i can see all of your faces because instead of just a few on the side um if you can unmute your uh, camera now that I'm back to the main page and uh, we've got 12 of us here. So last semester, I, I'm, no, I'm no, mostly want to do this to make a connection with you, but also to see your faces. Last semester, my classes raised $9,000, which is 18,000 meals. 
Yeah. I'm not joking around here. When I say that my classes like feed people, we feed people. When I say that that's my thing, that's my thing. I want 25,000 meals this semester provided. So I'm getting other professors, other people that I know that teach uh, on board to try and do this. So you can share that link. I don't know, somebody's grandma last semester gave $1,500, raised everybody's grades from three different colleges, <laughs> felt good about herself and made an impact. I know that some of you have relatives like that. So I'm just saying like my mom, um, she like would neuter or spade like people's dogs or cats four or five like of those a year for people that maybe couldn't afford it. So if you know people that might want to chip in and you think you can feed even more people with this, let's do it. Okay. All right. Um, oh, last thing. Our big paper is called the Food Matters paper. That's under assignments. Now, I could assign a paper about just about anything and it wouldn't apply to everybody. However, this food paper does apply to everybody in the sociology of food. I could ask you some nerdy academic college question like, what's your relationship with food? Something that, you know, nobody says ever in a conversation, but that it, once we ask it, we could examine that and look at that and be like, wow, that's, that's an interesting thing. We all have to eat we all have to drink to survive. So that's the reason that we've got this big food paper. I'm not gonna explain it now, but take a look at it. It's 150 points. It's not due for a while. Um, and I am here to help you. So you've got a big paper, you've got some content assignments, you have some discussions, there's an extra credit piece. And this is a brand new semester, right? And I think anybody who's been paying attention this last month that was like, whoo, 2020 is in the rear view mirror. 2021 already said, hold my beverage, right? So I know, look, that's so watered down. I think 2021 said, hold my Long Island iced tea. And that also those two bottles of whiskey and also hold whatever else you can hold. So here's what I'm saying. I know that uh, life is a bit different. And how many times have you heard that? Too many times. So I'm not going to say it. Let's just do our thing this semester. And my job is to help make you successful at that, okay? Um, in any way possible. So you've heard a little bit about this. I know we've only, you know, we're only 20 some minutes into it. I don't want to go too fast. Um, so be specific with me. Are there any questions about me, my family, the farm, sociology? Uh, my areas of interest are organic farming um, and race relations. So I've been doing race relations work for the past 25 years pretty extensively. I have worked at different colleges doing diversity consulting. I have gone into school districts and police departments and you name it and worked with CRJ doing uh, race consulting and, and race relations work. So those are some of my areas of expertise. I'm excited about talking about deviance this semester, who isn't. Um, pretty much anything in sociology, I, I, I dig. So what questions do you have for me? I'll stop, stop talking for one second. Um, and I'll just drink some coffee here for a second. I'll turn myself into a Kermit the Frog meme and say something about the Packers losing. Sorry, I can't help it. I'm from Chicago. I know the Bears suck, but the only thing that matters is if the Bears win or lose and if the Packers lose. So this morning, it's like a brand new day for me. Do you know that Rodgers has less Super Bowl rings than Jim McMahon, our quarterback from the 1985 Bears, who actually ended up winning one with the Packers somehow later in his career. Anyway, all right, that's enough of my Packer hate. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Go see you buffs. Uh, what do you think? Any questions for me, please? I have a question about the extra credit assignment. I live in Kansas. Is there a way that I can contribute more locally and still get the same extra credit? Uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I used to like do big food drive collections and we drop off thousands, actually thousands of pounds of food, but safety regulations and everything else. If you find a place that's local to donate to, forward me the information on that. You could still make the post on the discussion board. Yeah, if people are in different places in this world and I realize that they are, like maybe you were going to college now in your parents' basement. I'm so sorry. I just, first of all, I'm sorry about that. I would never wish that on anybody as a guy who has two teenagers living, one of them in my basement um, <laughs> in the same house. So, you know, it's my hope that things are awesome for you. Uh, at least in this class, we'll make it that way. Okay, other questions. What do you got for me? 
Um, I have a question. So with the um, so you said April twenty eighth is when the extra credit assignment could um, is due, but is there any chance that I could do it? Like start the discussion, you know, if I want to do it next week or something like that. Yes, absolutely. Right, awesome. Look, cool. you know, it's funny, Noah. When after the first test, who sees me after an exam? Let's pretend, let's pretend that we're live, like back in the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> who would come and see me after the first test? People who are like A students, people who got an F. What do you think? This is like a social question for you. Anybody? I, I think people, people who got an F would come and see you no thank you for playing though dude. really yeah it's like almost <laughs> always the people that got like a 94 and they're like jason this is concerning to me and i'm like take your foot off the gas pedal successo <laughs> you'll be just fine <laughs> exactly <laughs> so anyway i'm not making fun of those people but i'm saying there's no better time to start a discussion there's no yeah. better time to, to to start the extra credit you know i mean that's Again, it's easy, it's meaningful, and 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 people you need people are gonna earn A's and they're they earn F's. I mean, it's not me just being friendly here, and then suddenly everybody's like magical unicorn land. I wish that happened. And now that I've been teaching 15 years, I understand that people earn A's and earn F's. I no longer have that guilt complex over an F. I'm like, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. Um, yep. so anyway, yeah, you could start that anytime and with the discussions too. You know, if the, if the social observation is coming up, you don't have to reply to others like that. And it's not due till next week. But if you're sitting around for 20 minutes somewhere making an observation, write it down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you got it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, other questions about me, about the farm. I wanted to ask, um, is there a place on Canvas where the extra credit is shown? Because I can't find it. Yep, just... it'll be on the discussion board. Okay, thank you. Yep. And it's also in announcements. So okay. if there's something that I, and I just basically copied and pasted the link and everything from the discussion board. So yeah, you can find it in both places. And I'm going to, I will say this. I only taught one class last semester at CU and it was donations for like Larimer County. I know CSU and CU are like this, but we only got like a hundred out of that $9,000. We only got like a hundred or 150 bucks from CU. So that's why I changed where we're donating from. Because I think with two classes this semester, um, we can do a really good job. Now notice I didn't say we can crush that, we can kill that. Why? Don't shoot me an email ever. Why? Because this is sociology and language is the most important component of culture. So we wanna be really mindful all semester long. And yeah, I'm that guy that when some student says, can I shoot you an email? I'm like, I'd rather you just send me one and they're like, jerk. I get it. I get it. I get it. That being said, um, let's be mindful, you know, this semester, because I was just about to say, we, we're going to crush that food drive. Let's just rock it. That's as is rocking it good enough. Let's, let's do that. Um, oh, one, one thing for me, and this may be one of the most important things. And that is, I will teach you on day one. And then, you know, you go do the thing online, cultural pluralism. It will be on the first test. It will be in the stuff we talk about. Now, cultural pluralism is the ability to see something from someone else's perspective, okay? Not just your own. That is the entirety of sociology. We are social scientists learning to see the world from multiple perspectives. And we have to train ourselves not just to like see it from our own set of beliefs and biases and morals and values. We have to be able to look at things from a very broad perspective. That is why racism, discrimination, hate language, white supremacy, any of, any of that stuff has no place in society, number one, but no, no, no place in my classes. Whenever somebody does something stupid on campus and they do blackface or hang like a paper towel noose outside a person of color's dorm room, these are things that happen. I immediately make sure that those aren't my students because there would be trouble if there was. I really, really, really expect my people to be the best people on campus, to go out there and understand that a river works with more diversity. If you pull biodiversity out of that river, that chain does not work as well. Our culture of human beings is the same way. It works better. We have more possibilities when we embrace diversity. That's not like political correctness, that is reality. Okay, so in here, I am an ally for you. 
doesn't matter, gender, life experience, race, this is a safe place. Uh, and I'm a person that you can count on as an ally. Um, I am in your corner as long as you are using positivity, compassion, um, and mindfulness in our approach to other human beings. Okay. That's, I know that that, that sounded kind of rough around the edges, um, but that probably won't happen, you know, because I leave my students every single time we end a class period in person, distance, no matter what, I say, be good people and do good things. And I mean it, right? I know that you're those people going out there and being good people and doing good things. So, all right. Questions for me about the class, the farm, my dedication to sociology. No, I don't know. Any, anything? Dogs? I have a question about um, your farm. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm from Vermont. So I, I get your, your hippie thing, <laughs> um, your farm thing that you say you don't have. Um, wait, wait. Do you have livestock? I didn't, I didn't want to insult anybody. I forgot that the school's in Boulder. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's actually Boulder's reputation, which I don't, I think could be far from that, actually. Um, we have over 100 chickens. We do. Okay. Awesome. Yep. They, uh, they're on lockdown because we saw a fox about a week ago up on a ridge, casing the place out. They do every single day and every night. We understand that. The next day, even though we had the dogs outside and we were inside, I was in and out every 15 minutes. A fox came over and killed a duck and two chickens in less than five minutes. Um, so we've got to be careful out here. You know, it's, it's, it, livestock is like a uh, triumph and tragedy. The reason we don't own goats anymore, because goats are nothing more than tragedy machines that kill and eat whatever they want, whatever. You're like, oh, I want to get a goat to do yoga with and mow my yard. No, the goat's going to poop on you and eat your best rose bush and hundred year old tree. <laughs> so... We no longer have goats, um, but we do have a ton of chickens. Yeah. And uh, we sell a bunch of the organic, they're all organic eggs and organic feed. And we sell those at our farm stand and it's great. People just show up now. It's kind of like contactless, you know, farm stand. And, and we also, there's a no-co virtual farmer's market, which I think is really cool. That kind of came about this last year. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I'm not sure if people from Boulder are doing that or if that's just up here in Fort Collins, but no-co virtual farmer's market. The name of our farm is called Ravensdale Farm. And I don't know, we're out there maybe on face chat and snap book. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm kidding. I try and avoid as many of those things as I possibly can. Um, but we love it. And we've been out here four years and it's changed our lives. Absolutely. That's you know, awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yep. And, <laughs> and I, I teach an environmental sociology class. We'll be doing a big chapter towards the end on the environment and sociology, sociological environmental stuff. Um, so a huge connection there with me and uh, and so I guess I should say beyond organic food and agriculture, I also specialize in environmental sociology, which is pretty much everything. Water issues, food issues, you, infrastructure, you name it. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? I'd be happy to answer. Um, I have two questions, actually. Yep. Uh, so in terms of like note taking, should we just rely on like your YouTube videos and like the book? I think the best place uh, is where those two intersect, right? You know, cause like I said, I'm all about retention. So it's read it in the book, pull out the things that I think are most important, reinforce it in the lecture, write about it in the content assignment, and then do it on the exam. You see what I'm saying? Right? Like it's like four opportunities or five opportunities for us to retain and reinforce that information. So yeah. Yep. I think that that's a great starting place, even looking forward towards the first exam. Um, which I'm happy isn't just A, B, C, D. I do that in my person classes because we have to do four exams. I only do two online and make them much more in depth. Now, I'll um, remember this. There are lonely, lonely, lonely English majors sitting alone that work, that work at like the writing center that want to help you. CU has a lot like every college of resources. So although I'm going to help you with your writing, don't forget the resources that exist. Uh, from a distance, you know, at your school, those people write for a living. I mean, that's like their major. So, you know, when you're composing a, a term paper or something else, um, just remember there's lots of resources. And that's all about college. When you graduate, it's not going to be what grades you got. It's going to be the connections that you made in college and, and the relationships that you made, which are really primary. So, you know, keep that in mind. Old guy telling you about college, but I'm still in college and I'm 47 winning all sorts of winning over here. All right. What else? How else? Any, anything um, else? 
I have another question. How did you come up with Storm and Zion for names? Because I think those are awesome. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, that would be, because I am a hippie. No, 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 I'm just kidding. That would be, um, okay, good story. Storm, I named after the professor that I had that was my favorite professor in college with the lowest grade I ever earned, right? Like, I took a philosophy class and Storm Bailey was his name. I went to Luther College in Decorah, Iowa, small liberal arts school, loved it. And this, he's a friend of mine to this day, but there's like smart and then there's like philosophy people smart. Like, like that is some intense work. So I named uh, Storm after Storm Bailey, Zion. Z Zion, we didn't, we kind of knew with Storm that he was gonna be Storm. With Zion, we had a couple different names, two different names, um, but really, Mount Zion being maybe the highest point of justice. So his middle name is Justice, Zion Justice. Um, yeah, and he's awesome. He does animation and I mean, it's what it's, it's, in, it's intense. Uh, yeah, and he's, his, his mom has really long white hair. She's from Minnesota. Like I said, he's got long white dreads. I do race relations work. So yes, we've talked about cultural appropriation but there's no other way his hair will go besides shaving his head because you put a hat on it, he's got like a rat shaped dread by the end of wearing his baseball cap for like two hours. So yeah, he's a cool dude. And uh, yeah, Zion, yep. yep. And he actually named, he was really into reggae music when he was little and probably listening to it through us and stuff, but he named our cat that was born Ziggy Marley uh, in our house. So I actually have one son named Zion and a cat named, not even just Ziggy, Ziggy Marley, full name. Um, Boba Fett is our little girl Boston Terrier's name. <laughs> it's kind of an intense name for a tiny dog. But um, and then Huckle, we have a Catahoula uh, and Alma, a pit bull. Um, she's my snuggle muscle. She's the best snuggler ever. And Huckle, if you've never heard of a Catahoula, they're the Louisiana State dog. A lot of people don't know what they are, but they can climb trees. Go to YouTube and, and type in Catahoula tree climbing dog. Mind blown these dogs are like go into the swamps and flush out boar and bear and and hardcore but katrina pushed them up and over so now like where these dogs weren't normally found in parts beside the south now that they are and so to me great sociology disaster happens how does that change our relationship with something like dogs you know that might like breeds that might or not might not have been available in certain geographic places to me that sounds I love sociology because really everything and anything is social. So did I answer that question? I, I also have a question. Is, is it the same thing as the uh, Catahoula leopard hound? Yes. Yeah. yeah the same yeah. one. That's yeah, those are really pretty, those are really pretty dogs. Yeah, they're called Catahoula leopard dogs because they have spots on them. And I think yeah. there he is. And he's got some brown oh, and he's got spots all over. It. He's, you know, I mean, he is. I just took him to the vet and they said, this dog's nine years old. You got to be joking us because he can still get down to the backfield in like about three and a half seconds. And we've got a four acre yeah, farm, yeah. but he's also nine. <laughs> so he knows when to take a nap. We should all know when to take a nap. Really, that, that should be a prerequisite of anybody doing college work. Know when to nap. All right. <laughs> anybody else? Any questions about the class? How we're going to do things? Anything? All right. Cool. Any social majors in this class? Anybody raise a hand, thumbs up? Oh, okay, so we have 25, 35 people in here, but there's only 11 of us here. So I think I did see that there was a couple of social majors. If people end up digging this class, like I'm kind of the gateway drug for sociology. That's right. That's what I, that's what I proudly call myself at CSU because I get these big classes because I'm excited about it. And so if by the end of the semester, social is something that you're into or you want to talk to me about majoring in it, I really only recommend a few things. I'm not a big product guy or like I'm going to give my recommendation, but I give my recommendation about social departments and Instapot, not like Colorado pot, but the Instapot, the thing you cook with. Do you know what I'm talking about? Somebody give me a thumbs up if you have an Instapot. Those things are there. It might not be any social majors, but like everybody on the page is like, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So I will, I'll, I'll just keep it to those two recommendations, right? The CSU or CU social department, social departments anywhere. Those are the people that are most open-minded, embrace everybody, love diversity. The 80 year olds in the department were marching for people's rights when they were 20. The people who are 20 are currently doing that. You know, I, I think these departments are fantastic. 
Okay. All right, then. Be good people and do good things. And remember, I'm, I'm not absolutely too far away. Um, I'm right here in, uh, in the online world where you can get a hold of me. If you want to do a Zoom meeting, all those appointments will be on this link. And, and, and if you reach out to me through email by appointment. All right. Peace, everybody. Take care. Be good people. Do good things. Talk to you later. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, have a great semester. Thank you.